Coding with AI has been a pretty hot topic recently, and it has been for a while. Everybody on the internet seems to have different opinions on this. You know, I open my LinkedIn feed and all the suggested posts are about, oh, vibe coding's the future, software engineering's dead. You know, people are going to be able to prompt ChatGPT and in five minutes, it'll spit out a complex, multifaceted, full stack web app. And uh, other people say, you know, it's a fad. It's never going to be used for anything non-trivial. It's always going to hallucinate. There are others in the middle who are like, well, I can see its use as a productivity booster, but it will never really fully replace me. My opinion on the overall landscape is sort of in the middle. I think with the current AI models they have out now, they're just by the very nature of them not good at certain things. And I think the attempts to shoehorn them into being good at those things, you know, if you look at how they tweak them to perform really well on all the benchmarks, but then you put them into a complex, you know, dynamic real world scenario and they just fall over. I think it's going to be somewhere in the middle. And personally, if you think about it, there are some industries that would never want to fully remove humans from the software engineering process. Think defense, think government. Like imagine if the Boeing 737 software was written by AI. There's no liability there. And I don't see governments or defense being happy with saying, oh, okay, we've got this big black box that's gonna spit out our aircraft control system. Let's not kid ourselves, guys. That's not happening anytime soon. So I think people who are saying software engineering is a dead field are a little bit short-sighted, and I think people saying that AI has no use are also a little bit short-sighted. But then you might be wondering, why do I not code with AI if I think it legitimately could boost my productivity? And I do think that. I think if I got GitHub Copilot, or you know, I started coding with AI as like a coach or assistant, I definitely think my productivity could be boosted at work for my university assignments, even though, you know, for the ones that allow it, obviously. Um, or, you know, for my consultant jobs that I do, my opinion is this, okay, and I've looked at my audience demographics. We're all pretty much the same age. 18 to 24, there are some people who are a little bit older. He's just like me for real, we're all the same person. And uh, that's why I think this discussion will be really interesting to have with you guys. The point is, we're all pretty much early stage in our careers, okay? And here's the deal for juniors. You might be wondering, well, the whole thing about AI and GitHub Copilot is they're like, well, junior engineers can perform like senior engineers, so why wouldn't I want to do that? Here's why I think AI could be particularly detrimental to junior or early in career engineers, right? If I use AI to generate code that I theoretically could have feasibly written myself, it's just being used as a time saver. That's fine, right? If I could go through and read what it's written, and fully load that into my head and fully understand what it's doing, that's actually fine because all I've done is use AI to save me time. I would have been able to write that code anyway. The problem is if you take the mantra, junior engineers are going to be able to perform like senior engineers, and suddenly you have people who are early in their careers or you know don't have that much experience generating complex systems that have to work together. Sometimes there might be multiple systems involved that all have to interact. There's gonna be timing involved. There's gonna be integrity involved. That's when it becomes a problem because if you as an engineer couldn't have written that code yourself, what you have is not a time saver, but you have a magic box that generates another magic box. You have an AI that generates code that you don't know what it does. You don't know how it works. You don't know, you can't read through it and fully understand it. You might be able to understand parts of it, but you will never be able to fully grasp the whole picture. And the way that you become able to grasp the whole picture, I've talked about this in a video uh, I did recently called You Should Get Good at Debugging. The way that you learn how to load more context into your head and design more complex systems comes from practice and comes from experience where you yourself step through all of these you know you go up in baby steps like you start off with an application of this level of complexity and then you sort of increase the complexity until you're comfortable working with systems of that complexity i use the word complexity a lot the point is if you don't have that and you haven't had that experience and you're just generating these very complex systems where you have no idea what it does when they go wrong, and they will, like no code is perfect, even code written by senior engineers and people with tons of experience can have problems. You're not going to be able to understand how to fix that. And if you do manage to fix it, it'll be a hot fix. You might not be fully understanding the context, like, you know, it might be a symptom of a bigger problem with something that the AI has done. 
It might be that the little bug that you just hotfixed is going to have major issues for you down the road if you scale to more users or something like that, or you need to introduce another component into your system. It might be that the code is not particularly modular, and when you try and expand upon that, you've got this big monolith that you can't unravel and understand. So the point is, for junior and entry-level engineers, and for myself, you know, I want to go through that experience. I want to step up my system architecture and step up my level of code design and the systems that I'm able to work with. And the only way that I can do that is to do that myself, because the whole thing is this, right? The AI is loading the context for you. So you're not actually getting the practice of loading the context into your head yourself about the system that you're designing. So for example, you know, the system that I'm designing has to be able to communicate with this and do that and do all of this in real time. You know, I might have multiple threads. I might be talking to other microservices over a network. I might have latency. I might have caching. And that's the thing. It's like, if I couldn't come up with that myself, I've just got AI to generate it for me. I'm not going to be able to understand that. And if I rely on AI as a crutch, I'll never be able to understand that. That's my point here, guys. My point here is that especially for early career stage individuals like me, and like presumably all of you guys based on my demographics, it's like if you don't have that practice of let me load this context into my head and think about how these systems are interacting and sort of make that model myself, if I just let the AI do it, well, first off, a lot of the times they're not actually very good at that. And second off, you miss out on getting that practice in. So theoretically, you know, you're spending three or four or five years in an industry role and you're just using AI the whole time and you come out of that and maybe you're not senior level because maybe you have completely missed all of the practice of designing that architecture, thinking about how it works, debugging it when it goes wrong, working with systems that operate in real time and have parts that interlink and do this and do that and the other thing, all based on, you know, output from the others. You miss out on all of that because you've used AI as a crutch. And you might be thinking, well, okay, I can definitely see that if you use AI to generate the whole thing. But what if I just use GitHub Copilot? What if I just use it as a productivity booster? And then, you know, it's just saving me time. It's just a fancy autocomplete, you know, all this stuff. And I would say, to a degree, I understand that. But if you think about the sentiment that I've seen from people who use that, like, I don't know if you guys follow the Primogen. He's pretty interesting. But he's talked a lot about the GitHub Copilot pause, which is essentially like, if you're coding with GitHub Copilot, you your brain actually stops thinking for a minute, and he's, he's documented this uh, a couple times on his videos, your brain actually stops thinking for a minute because you're waiting for the AI to autocomplete it for you. And I think that's a really bad habit for, and if he's a senior engineer and he's saying that's a bad habit, imagine how bad it is for junior engineers because your brain just switches off while you wait for the AI to autocomplete your line. And it might be a trivial piece of code, right? It might be a trivial piece of code, but the point is that your brain is getting lazier. Like your brain is the one that's doing the auto completion. If you think about how you actually do code, your brain is doing the auto completion, but you're outsourcing that to something else. So I don't think it's as big of a problem once you get into the sort of, you know, senior level, because it's like at that point, I already know how to design these systems. I've had practice with working with complicated systems. I've been able to load this context into my head and anything that AI generates, I can read through it. I can understand it. I can look for problems. Essentially, it becomes like you're doing a code review of a junior engineer, right? Because the AI is kind of like your junior engineer and you're just doing a code review. But if you are an early stage or junior engineer, it can really handicap you later on, which is counterintuitive because the whole thing is like, oh, well, if you use AI, you'll pretty much become a senior engineer. So how could it handicap me? It's not handicapping you now, but it'll handicap you later on once you hit your ceiling and you're like, well, I can't do this. I can't debug this. I don't know what's going on. I don't know this, that, or the other thing. So that's why I don't code with AI. I don't code with AI at this stage in my career, even though I acknowledge it could probably give me a productivity boost because I want to go through the practice of building complicated and complex interworking systems myself. I want to go through the process of building up my own autocomplete in my mind. I want to be able to, in five years from now, like, okay, I want to ask you guys another question. 
if you look back at yourself from two years ago or one year ago or even six months ago, how much have you improved in your abilities as an engineer? Because if I look back, it's insane. It's exponential. It's crazy. Like I look back at myself a year ago and I did mention this in, in my other video on debugging. It's like I look at myself from a year ago. Would me from a year ago be able to design or work with some of these software systems or code bases that I'm working with now? And the answer is no, absolutely not. And two years ago, the difference is even bigger. It's actually crazy. Like going through this organic process of stepping up my abilities, working with slightly more complicated programs and software and systems than I have before incrementally over time, it doesn't feel like I've changed. But if I look back at my abilities and I look at the stuff I was working on, you know, one, two, three years ago, the growth is crazy. And I don't want that to slow down just yet. I want to keep getting that massive growth of like, okay, in another one or two years, the software systems that I'll be able to personally design myself without the help of AI is going to be insane. And eventually there'll be a spot where I plateau. And it's like, you know, I'm not really improving my abilities so much. And that's probably when it's time for me to start using AI to get that next boost. But if you think about it sort of like, okay, if you think about it as a, a more grounded metaphor, if you think about someone going to the gym, right, and they're, they're getting buff, they're natural, you know, they're not on the gear. If they're all natural and they're getting buff, and then they get on the gear, they're going to be a lot bigger than someone who just went straight on the gear. You know what I mean? If you build that muscle before, and I... I'm not recommending anybody get on the gear, okay? I don't, personally. I haven't been to the gym in years. I'm just using this as an example, okay? But if you think about AI as getting on the gear, <laughs> so to speak, if you spend more time naturally building your skill set with programming and engineering, when you get on the gear, your ceiling will be higher than if you had just gotten on the gear to begin with. That's kind of my point here. It's like, I don't want my growth as an engineer to be slowing down just to give myself a short-term productivity boost. I want to be able to build my knowledge, build my skill set, be able to engineer crazy things all on my own. And then, because if I look at my progression over the last two years, it's absolutely nuts. And then if I think about how good I'd be if I did start using AI, well, that's even crazier. So that's the deal. Why I don't use AI? In fact, I could have said something like privacy-wise, and that's true, you know, like, on principle, I don't like all of my stuff. You know, I'm a self-hosted guy. I'm a Linux kind of guy. I could have made that the point of the video. I could have said, well, I don't go with AI because I don't want all my stuff going to their service. And I feel like that would have been a fair enough point to make. But I wanted to take it in a different direction because, you know, as I said, I had a look at our, our audience demographics here and we're all pretty much the same person. <laughs> uh, we're all interested in very similar things. We're doing similar degrees at uni. You know, I've, I've done some polls on the community tab. So I want to put this to the floor. It's like, what is your guys as fellow early stage career individuals, what is your opinion on coding with AI? Do you use AI? What do you think about the industry? Are you worried about your job prospects being lost to AI? Are you worried about, you know, it's sort of taking away your learning abilities and stuff? Because look, I tutor some courses at university. We're going to yap for a bit. We're going to waffle, but you know, it's near the end of the video. So it's, uh, it's warranted, but I tutor some course at university, like an embedded systems course I mentioned in a couple videos, but sometimes I see ChatGPT code and sometimes I ask people, you know, someone will ask me a question and I come over and I answer them and I, you know, have a sneak peek at their little browser tabs and they've got ChatGPT up. And the title is pretty much the question they just asked ChatGPT, but apparently it didn't give them a good enough answer, so they're coming and asking me. <laughs> and that's fine, you know, like people want to use AI uh, to, to help them out. But I feel like if I'm thinking AI is a problem for me, and, you know, I've had a, a, quite a bit of work experience, but my students are using it, I feel like that's an even bigger problem because they don't really have that extra experience. But anyway, that's... That's my opinion. And with the quality of the questions they're asking, and you know, if I see ChatGPT code and I ask somebody how it works, I've had maybe 50-50 chance they've been able to explain it to me. So, you know, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So I want your opinion, guys, especially in universities. I think it's really detrimental to education. And everybody's going to be like, 
oh, I love using ChatGPT for my assignments, blah, 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 blah. And the universities always have on their like slides. It's like, you know, if you use AI, you're only hurting yourself. And people look at that, you know, the rebellious sort of, you know, youth. We look at that and we're like, ah, yeah, right. It's going to make my life easier. It's going to save me time. But they're not wrong. Like the way that they say it is really cringe, but the message behind it is actually like low key true. You are kind of hurting yourself if you use AI, if you don't really know what you're doing with it. Anyway, I want your opinions. Do you use AI? Do you code with AI? How far are you into your career? Do you think it's hurting you or do you think it's helping you? Do you think in the future it won't even matter? Yeah, let's hear it. Cheers.